Nashville's history with European settlers goes back to the 1700s when the location was at the center of a network used for the French fur trade. Later, a fort was built here and named for revolutionary war hero Francis Nash. There are some dark moments in Nashville's history. I was surprised to learn that the city once had owned slaves and used them to build and maintain city infrastructure. Fortunately, slavery was abolished in the United States and that practice can remain firmly in the past. After the Civil War, Nashville began expanding industry. As a result, it has grown significantly over the years and now has a population close to 700,000. The city is a music lover's paradise, and not just for the country music it is so famous for, there is a bit of something for everyone in this metropolis. A lot of people come to Nashville looking for entertainment and if that's what you want, you are not going to be disappointed. If you want to enjoy music, food and lots of exciting company, then Bourbon Street is the place you will want to go. The street is lovely pretty much any time of day but really comes to life at night. Earlier, we mentioned that a fort was built at the founding of the city. You can actually visit a replica of that fort right here in downtown Nashville. I could be wrong, but I don't think the original functioned as a shelter for the homeless. There is also a statue commemorating the founding of the city next to the fort. 
we wanted to get a good view of the city and the John Siegenthaler pedestrian bridge is perfect for it. The bridge is on the National Register of Historical Places and used to carry automobile traffic. In 1992, it was closed to automobiles. Rather than demolish it, they converted it for foot traffic. The name of the bridge comes from a journalist who once physically prevented a suicidal man from jumping off the bridge while he was working as a reporter. Heading over to the Centennial Park, you will find something that seems a little out of place for a southern American city. Here it is, the Parthenon, or at least a full-scale replica of the one in Athens. It was built in 1890 for an exhibition and serves as an art museum today. The choice to build this makes a little more sense when you learn that Nashville has the nickname Athens of the Source. The park has plenty of other monuments, like this one built in honor of a railroad tycoon. as well as a monument built to honor the women's suffrage movement. The city also has a fantastic museum covering the history of the state. It is very extensive and covers all the major time period of its history. Time to get something to eat. First stop is a bubble tea shop. I found it to be a little on the sweet side, but I think that's very popular here. For some food, we went to Larina Cafe. It's a small place, but the food is fantastic. The 
last stop here is going to be the Grand Ole Opry. It was originally located downtown, but moved to a more modern venue in 1974. The story I was told about the name says that early in its history, there was an opera on the air before the show. After it was over, the host said that from that time, they would be called the Grand Ole Opry. Hope you enjoyed this little stop in Nashville. Be sure to comment and give us a thumbs up. Thank you for watching. See you next time.